so very good morning to one all so we are here after a quite long time uh, so uh, i welcome you to the 33rd episode of yanaki tech talk on electric three wheelers on an exponential curve so the electric three wheelers is demonstrating a tangential potential in the last mile transportation ecosystem and is bringing a real dis- disruption in the mobility industry there's still many bits and pieces that we'll have of the missing puzzle that we need to understand for the growth and adoption of ev in india so today we have with us mr De- dr deb mukherji managing director angelian omega with over 35 years of experience in the automotive industry he has been very instrumental in bringing several foreign joint venture partners and set up successful projects in india he has also been an entrepreneur for the past 10 years and has successfully run his own business in 2018 he merged his companies with angelian omega and the group uh, an international business group into automotive and infra- infrastructure businesses in india he is on board of the group of managing director his research work includes evaluating indian auto comp- uh, components industry competitiveness on a global scale using a comprehensive evaluation model based on world economic Uh, forum research model on global competitiveness report he has been recently named in the list of top 50 global influencers and thought leaders by your story and leaders 360 organization he is currently mentoring startups in electric mobility last mile logistics and battery manufacturing in india uh, welcome you sir we have hope to have a very insight 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 session with you today Thank you. It's a pleasure to be on this uh, platform. Thank you. Uh, yes, so, you can take. Yeah. So, Deb, uh, you can start with the presentation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, for having me on this event, and um, uh, as um, uh, you know. everybody knows that electric vehicle is being talked about uh, quite a lot these days globally as well as in india so this is a uh, significant and a very profound change that we are seeing in the automotive industry it is in uh, still in nascent stage but looks very very promising uh particularly uh, seeing the way the global oems have embraced this change and uh, you know uh, gone ahead uh, full fledged on this uh, shift from ic engine to uh, electric vehicle and over next 10 years or so i am uh, confident that we are going to see a very large shift uh, in the alternate fuel Uh, um, technologies uh, largely driven by battery uh, battery is uh, the uh, you know one of the four uh, foremost technology which is mature the cars are on the road uh, and uh, car and companies like tesla have been spectacular success so this uh, looks to be uh, you know way ahead of other technologies being talked about like hydrogen Uh, fuel cell uh, uh, and uh, some other metal layer etc so uh, i do see that the auto industry in india uh, will also see a very uh, significant change in next 5 uh, to 10 years uh, primary uh, you know driver in india is uh, currently the government uh, the government has been very consistent with its policies and its intent and they have been supporting this uh, shift to electric vehicle with all their uh, various incentives and demand creation etc so uh, having set this context i would like to show a presentation and uh, talk uh, you know about this um, um, shift uh, and uh, what it means for the indian industry and uh, what are the opportunities for uh, indian components uh, industry uh you know that that's something that has been um, a great uh, interest uh, for me so uh, can you see my screen yes sir you can go yes it's visible okay so uh, the way i have structured it uh, is uh, let's talk about uh, the um, electric vehicle scenario uh globally and uh, in india and then uh, let's talk about what are the key factors which will enable this uh, 
shift and what are the opportunities and also challenges for the Indian components uh, industry. So that's uh, how I have structured this presentation. Now coming to the uh, numbers as uh, you know, we are all seeing um, uh, globally a lot of um, uh, the global OEMs have shifted to electric vehicles and uh, it is expected that by 2025, it is uh, not too far, we will have more than about 10 million uh, vehicles, um, you know, uh, per, per uh, year. So that's the kind of uh, 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 that's the kind of um, uh, penetration that we are looking at and we are looking at around between 10 to 15 uh, percent of penetration. However, I feel that, you know, given the way the fuel prices are uh, rising and also the commodity prices are rising. So, uh, you know, this uh, uh, these numbers can change. 50% uh, uh, of this uh, uh, volumes will come from China, but significantly, you know, non-China, we are seeing a lot of <clears throat> growth coming in from Europe, particularly post the pandemic. Uh, even though China and EU, uh, China and EU are expected to dominate the transition to electric in automotive industry, uh, China because they already have a head start. They started their electrification, uh, you know, around 10 or maybe 12 years ago with various government policies, incentives, etc. So China definitely has a large uh, head start, but uh, Europe seems to be driving it. Uh, in the last uh, couple of years. So these are some of the, <clears throat> you know, the data market uh, forecast global passenger electric vehicle sales to increase from 2.9 million units in 2020 to 9.5 million units. That's what I just said about 10 million units uh, are expected in passenger uh, vehicles. In 2020, Europe overtook China as the largest contributor to PEV uh, uh, sales growth to become the largest passenger PEV market. We have seen after the pandemic, countries like Germany, uh, Italy, France, etc. The governments came up with uh, large incentives. So that is something that has driven this uh, uh, volumes. Uh, in US, uh, you know, several states have adopted the zero emission electric vehicle program, and uh, we are seeing a big push coming from President Joe Biden's election promise of uh, reaching carbon neutrality by 2035. And uh, they want to replace uh, government fleet with electric vehicles, and also large amount of investment are uh, going to happen in uh, charging stations. So US also seems to be uh, quite on uh, way to you know electrify large amount of its fleet. Now this is an important slide. You know in this whole context of electrification, let's see uh, where these large OEMs stand. Because see in the automotive industry, you have to plan for uh, you know five year, ten year, even twenty years ahead <clears throat> because. Uh, car program, vehicle programs take a lot of bandwidth, a lot of resources, money, and time is required. So, uh, it, the any any uh, shift, and particularly as uh, such a large shift like e electric, um, you know, from IC engine to electric, uh, doesn't happen overnight. So, uh, it is very interesting to see. Um, this is a, a study that McKenzie has done recently. It came out. A uh, couple of months ago, and we can see that um, all the big uh, OEMs, you know, there are 13 OEMs that they tracked, and uh, these OEMs contribute to uh, roughly about uh, 60 million <clears throat> uh, units of sales. Globally, the industry is about 90 million. So, out of that 60 uh, million, uh, roughly about 70 percent is contributed by these top three. And these uh, top 13 and these top 13 OEMs have already made their plans to shift to electric vehicle in the next 10 to uh, 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 20 years. So you can see OEM by OEM, Volkswagen, Toyota, Renault, uh, Hyundai, GM, Honda, Ford, uh, FCA, PSA, Mercedes, BMW and the Chinese and uh, Volvo. So all of them. Uh, have made their plans and announced and they are, um, you know, realigning their manufacturing facilities to produce electric vehicles. So this contributes to 76% of the production. So that means that 76% uh, of the vehicle production would have shifted to electric vehicle by 2040. This is uh, significant. 
so uh, there seems to be absolutely no doubt that uh, electric vehicles uh, are going to be um, uh, ruling the uh, technology you know by uh, 2040 so uh, interestingly you know the biggest car maker in india maruti uh, doesn't figure into it so we'll talk about that later but uh, looking at the dynamics of the market uh, 76 percent of global cars would have shifted to uh, electric coming to the indian uh, scenario as i said in the beginning the indian uh, uh, shift to electric uh, today is um, largely driven by the government policies and government has been very consistent and they have been coming up with various uh, incentives both at central level and uh, state level in india it is important being a federal uh, you know uh, state uh, so the state governments also have to play uh, a role at uh, their level so um, electric vehicles are going to replace more and more ic vehicles in next 10 to 20 years in india ev volumes by 2030 would be 20 million uh, uh, two wheelers 800000 three wheelers 10000 buses a million cars now this is a vision by niti ayog so if you see on top you know 80% of two wheelers they expect to be converted to electric vehicle and 80% of three wheelers as well now you know we are already um, in uh, um, you know towards the last um, quarter of um, uh, 21 calendar year so that means that we we got just about nine years left to create this whole uh, shift uh, create the infrastructure create the demand create the complete ecosystem in place now it is a it is ambitious uh, i won't say it is uh, non achievable but it is a hugely ambitious uh, program so there are various uh, uh, assessments and uh, numbers being uh, talked about so we have to see how this pans out uh, you know 80 percent uh, shift in the uh, commercial vehicle segment of three wheeler and two wheelers currently these two segments are the ones who which are driving this whole shift obviously because of economic uh, benefits commercial uh, three wheelers uh, both in passenger as well as the cargo segment you know, uh, given the uh, increase in fuel prices, obviously it makes a lot of sense for them to shift to electric vehicle. So this is something that the government uh, would like uh, uh, to happen in India. Now, uh, let's talk about the EV business drivers and challenges uh, in India. Uh, drivers, as I said, largely the government policies. Now, let's see what the government is doing. You know, uh, government has come up with the uh, uh, incentivization of this whole uh, uh, electrification program and interestingly uh, you know we are seeing that they are incentivizing both the supply side as well as the demand side on the demand side uh, you know there are there are incentives um, fame too has come up with the uh, incentives for the uh, users uh, the manufacturer has to claim and pass it on to the user uh, and also at state level they have waived off the uh, registration charges road tax etc so those are uh, something that the government is trying to uh, you know do to create the demand on the supply side this is very important you see unless the suppliers are uh, encouraged and the whole ecosystem of supplies is uh, components is created it is very difficult to achieve these numbers relying on the imports etc so interestingly government has uh, you know come up with um, uh, policies to uh, encourage the suppliers we have the pli scheme uh, which is just from the corner going to be announced and uh, for the batteries which is a very key um, part of the uh, electric vehicle also on the charging stations there is an incentive so um, uh, startups uh, you know are being encouraged etc so in, in a combination if i see the government policies are uh, consistent and they are favorable and they are giving a boost to this whole uh, electrification economic benefits we all know the um, running cost of a electric vehicle is a fraction of uh, the uh, ic engine uh, vehicle and um, uh, given the uh, fuel price increase you know it is uh, the delta is increasing even uh, more uh, third is the technology readiness this is important you see you can have all government policies and uh, economic benefits etc but if the, the technology is not ready 
or the product is not ready, you know, you will never reach the scale. Today we have the technology readiness. As I said, the uh, battery technology is largely proven. It is also reaching uh, a large scale. Uh, with um, a huge amount of investments going into gigafactories and uh, vehicle manufacturing. So the we have, um, uh, you know, proven vehicle, we have safe vehicle and uh, which are on the road. So it's a proven technology now. And uh, last but not the least is environmental concerns, you know, particularly after, after the COVID, we have seen how, you know, during the lockdown, the cities got clean uh, air and environmental clean and AQI index dropped sharply, etc. So it is uh, clear that, you know, we have uh, a problem in our hands, particularly in the metros like Delhi, where every winters we have a problem of, uh, you know, the smog and we have uh, health issues, etc. So certainly this is a, um, a huge uh, driver for uh, the policy makers and uh, you know, um, also the new uh, young generation to switch to electric vehicles. So these, uh, according to me, are the four key drivers for electric business, uh, you know, shift uh, from IC engine. Of course, let's talk about the challenges. You know, the challenges are the obviously the upfront cost is a big challenge. The cost of battery and powertrain in an EV contributes to more than 70% uh, uh, of the whole uh, vehicle cost. Battery particularly is uh, roughly about 40-45%, uh, which is uh, quite large. Now, on the uh, financing side, particularly, uh, you know, right now we have most of the vehicles in the commercial uh, segment. In India, the data shows that almost 90-95% of the vehicles are uh, sold through financing. So this is where the challenge is uh, coming. The uh, institutions, um, the NBFCs and uh, financing, uh, financing institutions are uh, not um, uh, financing the, uh, or really not coming up with the uh, products to finance the electric vehicles in a in, uh, big way. So, um, you know, we uh, we need to uh, sort this out because unless you uh, unless we have the banks coming in uh, and uh, start financing the vehicles at uh, moderate uh, rate of interest, the it is very difficult to get the scale. Lack of infrastructure, both at supply and demand side, it is understandable because this is a, uh, you know, the industry is at a nascent stage. So infrastructure will start uh, developing. And as I said, with the push coming from government and uh, incentivization uh, coming in, so we are uh, likely to see developing the supply side, the component makers, etc. And on the demand side, we will see more and more charging stations, infrastructure being put in place. So that is something which uh, needs to happen at a quick pace. Let's talk about, uh, you know, what uh, makes the electric vehicle, the whole architecture. So this is a pure electric electronics and IT play, as you can see. The whole uh, vehicle architecture is more like a electronic uh, gadget. So we have on the transmission or the drive unit, we have the transmission, we have the motor, we have the controller. And uh, then comes the, uh, the battery power distribution, DC-DC converter and uh, uh, you know the uh, onboard charger and electric harnesses and switches etc uh, on the battery thermal management is a key um, element particularly in context of india where the ambient temperature itself can shoot up to 48 degrees or uh, you know beyond so it is very important to have some sort of active cooling in the battery otherwise it uh, may create a safety issue so uh, what I'm trying to say is that now this is a big shift from the traditional uh, IC engine uh, vehicle uh, from the manufacturing standpoint, because what you have to see is you have to see the car or a vehicle uh, more like a electric or electronic gadget. So that shift of mindset has to happen and you have to work, uh, the OEMs have to work with the um, with the suppliers in these domains electronics uh, it plays a very big role and uh, a recent study by deloitte shows that in the modern cars 
the electronics and IT component uh, could be as high as 50 to 55 percent of the whole cost of the vehicle. So it's massive. And I also do see that this is also a massive opportunity for Indian suppliers. We'll talk about it a bit later, but this is how the, uh, the whole uh, vehicle, uh, you know, manufacturing, vehicle architecture, vehicle composition uh, is shifting from IC to uh, electric. Um, coming to the battery, you know, everybody talks about the battery uh, and every, we all know how critical the battery is because with the engine gone. So obviously battery is the power source for the vehicle. Uh, globally, huge amount of money is being put uh, in uh, battery capabilities and uh, we do see that this is going to play a major role in uh, any uh, country becoming uh, uh, an automotive uh, powerhouse. So we see the split region wise, you know, currently there is just about 475 gigawatt hour of uh, capacity, largely led by Asia Pacific, particularly China. It is in, when you talk about Asia Pacific today, it is largely China. 90% uh, of it is controlled and, uh, you know, generated by China. Then we have Europe and North America. But going forward in 10 years time, we are going to see roughly about um, uh, six times of this uh, capacity being created in 10 years. So this is going to be a major uh, factor in EV adoption in uh, the entire region. And we do see that Asia Pacific, again uh, led by China, Korea, Japan and India, will have 57% of the uh, battery um, uh, capacity share. So the battery capacity is close, uh, going to be close to 3000 gigawatt. This is based on the, um, the projects. Those are uh, in pipeline or the, which have been uh, announced by various uh, companies. So this is again um, going to be a significant uh, driver for the whole electric vehicle uh, uh, industry because uh, battery is the key factor, uh, you know. Now, uh, just take that. Let's take the discussion of um, battery a little bit further. Now, we know that lithium, cobalt, manganese are three vital uh, metals for lithium ion batteries, but these are also very uh, highly energy intensive and envir environment uh, impacting industries. Uh, the pictures you see on the screen, you know, that says it all. There are questions about uh, ethical mining and uh, regulations being followed or or not followed, uh, you know, uh, in mining. Also, uh, lithium is uh, a huge uh, energy uh, guzzling uh, industry. Major metals used in lithium uh, ion battery are lithium, cobalt, manganese and nickel. Lithium is around 52% uh, global reserves are in these uh, triangle called ABC, Argentina, Bolivia and Chile, where most of the mining happens by companies from China, US, Canada and uh, Australia. Uh, the lithium triangle is creating a war on water, causing tensions and a recent drought in Chile has intensified it. So. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, the uh, industry uh, together with researchers, academia have to come up with alternate uh, to these um, uh, exotic uh, materials, raw materials that go into manufacturing the batteries. Already, uh, you know, cobalt free batteries uh, are uh, in manufacturing. Uh, and many companies have come up with, uh, you know, alternate uh, uh, electrodes, uh, uh, you know, alternate uh, or a mix of lithium with the, um, uh, other materials. So I think that's where most of the research will happen next few years. I just summarized, you know, on the battery, the key concerns and what the battery makers need to address uh, uh, and, and the challenges uh, for the battery makers. See, the charge density is currently 10 kilometer per kilowatt hour and around 85 uh, watt hours per kg. So the battery is quite uh, uh, big in size and also the kilometer is just about 10 kilometer per kilowatt hour. So this is something that needs to increase as um, uh, developments happen. Um, uh, you know, we could see something uh, that we we have seen in other industries, computers, the, the, the memory processing speed, you know, increased exponentially. So uh, something like that might happen and we could see, you know, even uh, companies are claiming double this uh, charge density 
uh, at a lower uh, uh, you know the pack uh, weight so this is something that uh, is a challenge today charging time is a big uh, challenge 3 to 4 hours for lfp chemistry uh, you see 3 to 4 hours of downtime for a commercial vehicle is very high so the commercial vehicle uh, number of hours it runs number of kilometer it does in a day it uh, means uh, uh, you know the revenue for the user uh, kind of directly proportional to the revenue so this is something that industry has to figure out already rapid charging quick charging technologies are there and this i believe will uh, get standard and we might have uh, you know below 30 minutes as uh, standard charging so that's something that is uh, going to happen next few years safety we talked about the thermal management is very very critical uh, you know we cannot have unsafe vehicles on the road jeopardizing uh, the lives uh, of occupants etc cost is the uh, critical factor uh, but costs have been significantly coming down currently uh, it is at 225 kilowatt hour uh, dollars per kilowatt hour in india but uh, they are already being talked about below 100 um, it might be difficult in a short run but uh, given the uh, large uh, uh, you know the benefits and incentives coming in from government like pli schemes and also big uh, projects being announced like uh, by reliance adani etc we are going to see large capacities and which will in turn bring down the costs and battery life the industry has to sort this out because 1800 cycle is just about uh, you know if you are charging two cycles a day then uh, is is going to be just about 3 uh, years so this is uh, too uh, low and um, i think battery life also needs to increase so we talked about alternate material for electrodes electrolytes and uh, separators uh, has to come in to, uh, with their technology and uh, then uh, battery manuf cell manufacturing has to happen now just to summarize you know what this uh, means for the uh, indian industry there is a economic opportunity uh, uh, domestic uh, as well as the global opportunity now global opportunity is very significant because even though india is a large uh, uh, car maker we manufacture about 4 million uh, cars passenger vehicles uh, you know 20 million scooters a million of commercial vehicles etc but still our share in the global auto market is very you know minuscule particularly on the component side so globally this is uh, auto industry is uh, somewhere around 10 trillion dollars of industry so coming on the ev side i do see that ev offers a great opportunity for the indian industry to play a role uh, globally you know components like motors controllers electronics where we have a uh, strong hold on the it side i think this is where um, indian industry components industry will have a large uh, opportunity and this should be availed this is something that um, you know we did not see in the ic era but uh, i ev can change that coming to the social opportunity see this electric vehicle can replace uh, um, uh, the hand driven rickshaw or the street cars etc and it can um, uh, create uh, entrepreneurship it can create new generation of high skilled jobs Uh, because this um, uh, industry needs uh, uh, high skilled uh, technicians engineers so this is where uh, it will create a uh, you know uh, social change also recycling of battery will be a new industry which will emerge and uh, reclaiming the metals out of it it is an opportunity for the entrepreneurs on the technology side we talked about efficient vehicles iot enabled smart vehicles you know high highly efficient battery <coughs> systems uh, etc so those are the technology opportunities for the industry to work on we talked about the environmental opportunity i think this is a great opportunity for us to um contribute uh, our uh, bit on the environmental uh, you know emission reduction and energy conservation etc in a country like india we uh, waste a lot of um, uh, you know products energy uh, resources as uh, uh, give it give an example you know almost data shows 30 to 40% of the food products get wasted in india so this is uh, something that uh, you know we need to look at seriously 
and we could leverage this uh, technology to reduce the emissions at, at least you know almost 60% of the emission is caused by the vehicle uh, the vehicular uh, tailpipe emissions i think those this is a great opportunity to do, uh, sort this out and on the political side obviously this is a great opportunity for all the political parties to you know put it as a um, uh, you know action plan on their agenda and uh, create a difference let's talk about the component opportunities a little bit more in the ic powertrain the basic engine is 30% it is uh, in terms of cost transmission 25% then we have control injection 30% auxiliary is 10% and exhaust is 15% uh, this is the cost uh, split it changes uh, dramatically in electric vehicle uh, 70 percent of the cost goes in the battery pack and bms then 20 percent as the motor the power uh, transmission and battery uh, uh, constitutes roughly about 90 percent of the cost so you you see the uh, the cost dynamics is all centered around the battery and the motor so this is also the opportunity for the components industry to shift from these, uh, you know, the powertrain uh, IC engine uh, uh, to uh, electric vehicle and focus on these um, high value products. So this is where uh, I think the auto components industry will have to realign itself into this new era. If you see the turnover of the industry is somewhere around 50 billion in normal times, 50 billion US dollars. And the split is OEM exports and after one. Let's, let's talk about exports now. It's just about 25%. So we have just about 10 or $12 billion of export on a, in a market of $10 trillion. So it is, it is a very, very minuscule, uh, uh, you know, share. So I see that, uh, you know, um, there are two things that uh, industry has to keep in mind. One is that, you know, the current exporters who are exporting uh, IC engine, powertrain, uh, gearbox, engine parts, uh, those uh, that, that businesses will come down dramatically looking at the way the shift is happening globally in US and uh, uh, Europe. So these suppliers will have to immediately plan for alternate, uh, uh, you know, uh, products to uh, keep their businesses intact. So these relationships should be leveraged and uh, look at uh, the new alternate uh, opportunities of motors, electronics and electrical parts for the electric vehicle. The split is uh, Europe and North America. We export close to about 60 percent. Uh, Asia, even though we have uh, Japanese and Korean companies having a dominant share in the uh, Indian market, uh, Hyundai and uh, Maruti, co you know, controlling uh, more than 70 percent today. But still, uh, you know, they don't buy anything uh, or, or nothing much from India. So that is something that, uh, uh, you know, we need to look at. So uh, North America and um, Europe on the other side is, is a huge market, uh, both on the OEM as well as the aftermarket. And with this electrification happening in these two um, continents in a, in a very big way, I think this itself is going to be a huge opportunity for uh, component uh, manufacturers. Next two slides, I have summarized, you know, what are the components and what is the technology trend and what are the complexities for the uh, powertrain and other part manufacturers. So looking at the uh, powertrain, we have the battery packs, cells, BMS, wiring harness, electronics, then comes motor controller and gear reduction unit. So these are obviously um, complexities are high and uh, the technology uh, is also uh, complex for battery cells etc and whereas motors uh, you know new uh, technologies like non magnet axial uh, axial flux radial flux small size efficient motors are coming into play uh, this is important because uh, motor manufacturing though happens in india the normal ic car also uses a lot of motors but we need to customize the motor and look for a technology which is highly efficient and uh, uh, you know a small pack of motor but uh, it has to be more efficient the norm, uh, than the normal motor for the electric vehicle so this is where the innovation uh, will drive uh, the development so these are uh, some of the products that the industry needs to choose and focus on you know what all the uh, component makers want to focus on and where is their 
competence uh, lies suspension body parts electronics and software so broadly i have covered the entire vehicle and we we have looked at the business opportunities and uh, which these can at next level can be filtered and uh, you know the industry can look at what what uh, they can uh, focus on now uh, how to make the glo industry globally a uh, competitive you know i've used the uh, porter's diamond uh, uh, format uh, uh, and uh, we have the firm structure stru stru from uh, strategy structure rivalry this is something that industry needs to focus on its internal uh, business strategy it's on internal uh, business structure and a healthy rivalry between the uh, industry players will help uh, create the competitive uh, this demand creation government is as as we talked about government is making its uh, efforts to create the demand uh, by incentivizing it and it's really playing a very positive role related and supportive industries uh, create a uh, you know a healthy environment uh, for example aerospace industry uh, you know a lot of technologies uh, get transferred from aerospace to automobile so this is something that we need to create the industry academia researchers battery companies etc they all have to work together and create this uh, you know ecosystem um, uh, here factor conditions are you know india has always been a factor based economy we have competed based on our raw materials based on human resources and the whole macro economic uh, you know factors so these are positive uh, although on the human resource side i have concerns that you know we need to reskill uh, our uh, human resource for the automobile uh, electric industry uh, automobile uh, engineer in the electric vehicle uh, uh, domain has to be a software in, in engineer who knows uh, automobile not the other way around so i think the focus on uh, software and uh, uh, it uh, is must so um, taking this uh, we we talked about india is a factor based economy for a long time competing on strength of factors human resource material availability macroeconomic factors of the economy now india has to become an efficiency efficiency driven economy soon and thereafter an innovation driven economy uh, statistical data shows that the gdp per capita increases from close to 1700 dollars to uh, in in factor based to $3000 when you become efficiency based and it jumps to $17000 per uh, you know gdp per capita when you become an innovation driven economy and we are talking about competitiveness uh, as a whole not just uh, financial competitiveness or technology competitiveness we are talking about a complete uh, you know a system uh, driven competitiveness on a global platform so what in this indian industry needs to focus on um, from my side i believe that uh, automotive it energy uh, academia these are the stakeholders and they have uh, stakes in this industry they have to come up and have a collaborative approach to make this uh, successful uh, transition from ic to electric uh, vehicles so market led opportunities supply chain assurances strategic partnerships and other alliances other kinds of alliances joint ventures technology alliances etc will have to be um, done amongst these uh, industries so then uh, we can have a, a very uh, vibrant sort of ecosystem r&d approach ip focused approach uh, has to be uh, um, you know followed partner with startups and uh, with uh, innovative ideas will help and overall uh, i think um, investment in capacities enhancing skill sets is must, must india has always been looked at you know small size industries small size, and compared to china where uh, typically uh, of course they are government aided etc but uh, I, I do see that uh, now it's time that uh, you know um, with the investors uh, showing interest in this uh, uh, sector india should create global uh, uh, size capacities now just to summarize uh, i would say that ev is a game changer for the automotive industry i think there is uh, no doubt the debate on whether ev will come or not has been settled it is growing at an exponential pace globally and we will see this inflection in india as well 
it has a positive impact on environment safety clean living of a large population this is important i would say disruption uh, or a disruptive technology is the one when it uh, hits the or or impacts the bottom of the pyramid at a very affordable cost so this this uh, technology has uh, a capability or ability to do so and become a really disruptive force it's a great opportunity for indian industry to become a globally competitive industry we talked about the opportunities available we talked about uh, you know the areas where industry can become uh, a globally competitive and globally known uh, industry with uh, a make in india brand all stakeholders need to come together in this movement ev i see it as a social movement it is not just a, uh, a simple change from one uh, technology petrol driven to uh, electricity driven i see this as a a large social movement which which has the uh, potential to uh, impact a large uh, number of population we can lift a huge number of population um, you know out of poverty leveraging this technology and uh, obviously the economic spillover effects of the above are immense it's a force multiplier and if done right i think uh, it can really become a big uh, change um, uh, for for the whole country so that's where i will end uh, my um, presentation and um, i will look forward to your uh, comments and uh, questions if any over to yeah, you doctor Shik. yeah doctor dev can you hear me i can hear you yeah yeah so uh, thanks for this very energetic uh, you know and very focused uh, element giving a uh, complete uh, 360 degree view as well from the raw material of the battery all the way to you know what are the skill gaps in the industry as well so thanks a lot for this uh, insights um i want to have uh, do something today which we have not done before with our guests so i want to do a rapid fire question round with you wherein you know i want you to uh, give the uh, uh, give the choice uh, of the answer very very fast so i'll i'll start this you're scaring rapid, me <laughs> rapid fire round so uh when it comes to ev is it a revolution or a ev evolution it's a revolution is lithium the new fuel yes is china the new saudi arabia yes are we creating a new evil are we creating a new are we creating a new evil no is this going to be at the end a big player game with reliance and adani and tata no are traditional indian tier ones sleeping yes are our colleges giving the right skills no as an oem would you like to make your own battery yes as an oem would you like to make your own motor yes good i think you have done a very good job <laughs> shekhar can i can i also ask shekhar okay yeah go ahead hi, go ahead sir hi vijay here are uh, are our, our it companies not capable of meeting the standards that you mentioned it's going to be a engineering it led product are it companies backward in this today yes they are okay i i would say you see the whole uh, it industry you know even though we are a we are a super power and, and they have done a wonderful job they are, they are they are great companies and i have a lot of respect for them and the way they have really evolved and done so well but point is that you know we need to see innovation you see the point here is that uh, you know it typically it guys don't know uh, don't understand automobile automobile people don't understand it you see uh, it has to the the but let's talk about on from the context of uh, it guys you know the 
the technologies were there already, you know, whether it is GPS or camera, radar, LIDAR, uh, you know, artificial uh, on the uh, software side, AI, big right. data analytics, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So now in a car, this is a convergence of technology. This is integration of technologies. So this is where uh, the innovation lies, you know, how you use and apply these technologies. So I don't see that uh, Indian uh, IT guys doing that. What, uh, you know, obviously Tesla is a shining example, you know, they are even doing their own chips, but but on these uh, on, on the software side, you know, uh, where mm -hmm. where where competence of Indian companies lies, you know, we, we the brilliant uh, the guys who can do the coding and do the data analytics, etc. This is where we need to apply those technologies and, uh, and 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 define or sort of redefine the automobile. It is not just a um, uh, just 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 uh, something which takes you from point A to point B. It is a it is a large computing device. So so we will remain the backroom uh, boys in India. May they still have the backroom guys to do what we were doing data crunching. We may do data crunching, but not innovative integrating so, everything. Right. I, I I agree. If they don't shift their uh, you know strategy, business strategy, and don't really come together and work with the automobile players, mm -hmm. it is difficult. Uh, you know, and uh, they may be happy doing what they are doing and making money and all. I have no no problem mm -hmm. with that. But uh, what we read, we really need to see you know an Apple or a uh, Amazon or or, or a, you know Facebook uh, coming out or a Microsoft coming out of India. You know, we mm -hmm. we need. It's time, and and this is a great opportunity. You see, this is uh, otherwise it will be like any other opportunity lost. You know, I was talking to somebody from government uh, last week, and we were talking about solar. Just just remember what uh, solar, uh, how solar has evolved last twenty years. You know, it it has really done wonders in terms of scale, size. Uh, the costs have become a fraction of what they were when we began. Mm. But unfortunately, you know, solar cells are still being imported from China. Uh, the Honorable Minister has uh, given the data uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he has given uh, almost two to three billion dollars of solar cells are imported every year. So out of 10 billion of investment every year, two to three billion gets imported from China. And the reason uh, everybody gives is China is cheaper. They're quickly available, readily available. Anyway, it's a separate debate, but what I'm saying is that, you know, it, sh it should not go that way. Uh, and after 20 years, again, we are import dependent because China is cheap or China can mass produce. I mean, that's something that uh, the EV industry needs to figure out. Who is doing the IT work for the Chinese companies? You have a large number of people in China doing electric. Are the Chinese themselves doing it or are they? You see what? You know, the way China does is when China gets into something. When, when, when China get, gets into something, they do two things, uh, you know, traditionally. One is that they, the whole state, uh, you know, sort of uh, takes over the entire project and then they bring a huge scale into it. They do everything in scale. They don't do anything small, aided by, of course, the government policies and incentives, etc. Second thing they do very well is that they set up the entire supply chain right up to the base raw material uh, you know level okay. that's something that they do very well and now they are doing the same thing in hydrogen next year they have planned for 1 million cars you know 1 million cars in one year uh, in uh, operating on hydrogen so they want to take the head start in hydrogen now so coming back to your question, what China has done is, you know, they because of their immense uh, deep pockets, they acquire the companies having the domain knowledge globally. They have acquired scores of companies in Europe and US and companies having startups or domain knowledge or electronics or automation or AI. Uh, I personally know some companies, some company, uh, big, big Chinese companies acquired in Italy, France, etc. Design companies and all. So anything they spot, they will just go and uh, acquire it. You know, so that's the uh, strategy that they evolve. And uh, you know, if if you can't develop something, go and buy it. That's the strategy. Yeah. So interesting, you mentioned hydrogen. I that also was a question which I was going to ask. I'm sorry, Shekhar. If can I continue? Is it or oh, other... okay, we'll come back to the question. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sorry.
So, uh, Dr. Deb, uh, you shared uh, this number of uh, uh, two hundred and twenty-five dollars per kilowatt hour, right? And we yeah. keep on hearing actually a very different number, one twenty dollars. It has come down to one twenty dollars. Soon it will be at hundred dollars. And um, so, what wh what's the gap between these two numbers, and what brings it down? Uh, what will bring it down faster? You see, it has not come down to 100 or 125. The people are projecting, the industry is projecting or or more than projecting, it is a wish list that, uh, you know, th there is a study uh, done in US which shows that if it comes down to $100, then the, the price parity is uh, there between IC and uh, uh, electric vehicle. So that's that is where it all started. And also we had to see the trend, you know, 10 years ago, 20. 2010, the price was $1,200 per kilowatt hour. From 1,200, it has come down to at a level of 225, 250. That is where the currently the industry is. But there are projections. Looking at, you see, I showed you the uh, the battery uh, capacity is being put globally. You know, we're going to have 3,000 uh, gigawatt hours. So that is going to feed these uh, roughly about 20 to 30 million uh, vehicles that uh, they intend to produce. So. Uh, once the scale comes, the prices drop. I know it's quite normal, and I, we we have seen it in every other industry. Imagine uh, or or uh, go back, uh, you know, three decades, and uh, the cost of laptop used to be, you know, somewhere around two lakh rupees, and uh, the, so and, and so today, desktop and laptop, there is no price difference. Same with cell phones. Uh, you know, any any industry, once that uh, uh, inflection comes, so the prices drop uh, rapidly. So I do see that, um, you know, uh, the price point of 150 should be achievable in next uh, three to five years time uh, in India. I, you know, the PLI scheme of government is expected next week. Let's see what are they what do they come up with. But looking at the way the feelers are coming, the the companies are making these announcements. Reliance uh, announced, and uh, once Reliance comes into uh, something, then it's going to be uh, massive. So and they will drive down the prices. So a the cell manufacturing has to happen in India. B the scale uh, at a at a particular level has to uh, come. I don't know whether it is uh, one giga watt hour or 10 gigawatt hour but i guess once the cell manufacturing starts and with adani ambani and tata and several other big uh, corporates getting into it i do see that scale of 10 gigawatt hour should be reachable uh, in the next three to five years and one when that happens uh, this, this will uh, do two things one is it will drive down the price it will also create pull on the OEMs to shift to uh, you know electric today. I don't know. Maruti is coming up with various statements and all, but one of the key reason OEMs are not shifting uh, to EV is non-availability of batteries in India, and that is a valid point. So once you have the battery manufacturers, you know it is going to be a reverse pull, not from the OEM to uh, the component side. It is from the component side to OEM. It will ask the OEMs to come and shift to the electric vehicles. So this is where we will see a large uh, shift. Um, I, my guess is, um, you know, five years. Okay. So um, in the interim, what we uh, seem to be uh, witnessing is that the cost pressure, since the cost of the battery cannot reduce immediately, other aggregates are being made to cost reduce way more than their normal you know evolution so there is a cost pressure for example on the motor controller and gearbox uh, to come uh, within like 30000 rupees uh, so what are your thoughts on this uh, motor side of the things you see on the motor i am very optimistic and i do feel that you know everybody talks about only battery and bms i think people are not talking about motors the scope of innovation on motor and the whole powertrain uh, which is largely the motor than the controller and the uh, the gear reduction unit on the motor side there is a huge uh, scope of innovation motors have not broadly changed in last uh, several decades you know it is the both i mean talking of the principle of uh, motor 
so this is an huge is an immense opportunity for uh, industry to come up with uh, uh, innovative technologies to make these motors uh, efficient uh, you know, it's not that you pick up off the shelf motor and fit it into a vehicle and it will start driving. So that's not the that should not be the way it should be looked at. The motor has to be uh, sort of redesigned and we, we need innovative ideas, you know, um, axial flux, radial flux or small size motors, hugely in a, uh, efficient motors, non magnet motors, etc. So this is where I think the um, the opportunity lies for uh, researchers, academia, and and uh, companies to come up with innovative uh, ideas. Coming to the cost pressure, yes, uh, battery costs are a bit um, un, you know not in our control today because of uh, one is the cells are not made here. Secondly, uh, it is um, dominated by one or two companies only. So this is where we have a, uh, an issue, but I do see that uh, this will change. Also, government is uh, pushing, uh, you know, apart from the fame too, there are other incentives coming. Um, so I do see that uh, battery, okay, well, uh, as I said, you know, leaving the battery aside, the potential to do um, uh, engineering, innovation, uh, redesigning, etc. On the other aggregates is also immense. Which even wiring harness, you know, uh, you know the whole. Uh, it, it, it is surprising to see the impact wiring harnesses, switches, electrical parts can make on the vehicle. It could be uh, quite substantial, and it should be. I, I have always believed that you know just just uh, negotiation driven. Uh, cost reduction is meaningless for a, for a technology product. It has to be, you know, uh, engineering driven. This is something that uh, Indian, uh, unfortunately, okay. Indian traditional OEMs don't understand that uh, concept. Yeah, they don't understand, and uh, you know, squeezing the uh, supplier and uh, cornering him and all that happens here uh, a lot. I think um, that needs to change because. Uh, it has impacted the uh, several industries, several companies, and the whole business model is uh, sometimes not sustainable. So I think the whole uh, cost engineering has to be uh, seen uh, led by engineering efforts. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Deb, a couple of questions uh, more in line with the portfolio of uh, Omega Seki. Uh, one is, uh, you know, two-wheeler and three-wheeler is square, uh, squared out now. Uh, but uh, as the three-wheeler evolves, there is this interesting market segment of one and a, one and a half ton to two ton uh, type of payload. And um, uh, it's a market segment which can be addressed both by the three-wheeler and uh, by the four-wheeler uh, Tata Ace type of platforms. So what, what do you see as the trend uh, when it comes to electrified uh, offerings? Yeah, it's a very important and actually a subject that I uh, really like to, uh, you know, talk about. You see, the I see the industry moving from sub one ton payload to um, higher than one ton payload. Um, it is it is um, difficult, I won't say impossible, but very difficult to do in a three wheeler, you know, increasing the payload uh, beyond one ton because of the whole stability of the all and the whole architecture of the vehicle. Uh, it is it is very difficult, but um, on a four wheeler pickup truck, something like uh, bigger than Tata is, you know, uh, in, in the payload of one, one to 1 1.5 ton is the demand of the day. And it is a great product to whoever we have talked and everybody is sort of very excited by this. We are working on it in Omega Seki and uh, we hope to uh, launch our product in the market by early next year. So that's our plan. It's going to be a pickup uh, truck bigger than the Tata is, you know, we are targeting 1.5 ton and 250 kilometer uh, single charge uh, you know such a such a platform does it remain on the lower side of the voltage like 7296 or it goes into the passenger car side of uh, voltage it's 72 volt 72 yeah 72 volt. Uh, uh, from a Omega Seki perspective, what do you see as the volumes in the coming years for your uh, uh, portfolio? 
you see three wheelers if you talk about in india the three wheeler uh, three wheeler volume industry is roughly about 500000 half a million uh, you know of course pre covid but that that was the kind of uh, market we always had and market was uh, growing at uh, 7% 6% like that and interestingly about 400 odd thousand vehicles are also exported so the total uh, production in india is close to a million uh, uh, vehicles and uh, domestic market is 500,000 out of that uh, roughly about uh, 200,000 uh, is cargo 300,000 is passengers so that's the kind of volume mix we have so out of this 200,000 cargo is something that will shift to EV that we are targeting and uh, I do see uh, the drive coming or the push uh, pull coming from e-commerce companies and various other uh, segments. So to answer your uh, question directly, I am looking at uh, you know uh, thousand vehicles a month, something like twelve thousand uh, volume for us next year. This will come from the existing customer as well as we have some very uh, encouraging. Uh, you know, um, uh, demand coming from government agencies. You know, EESL has come up with a large tender, and they uh, right. one lakh hundred thousand vehicles, and they want to go to three hundred thousand. So once that kicks in, so that will be additional volume, and then we will see this uh, whole uh, you know volumes increasing exponentially. So I would say about thousand vehicles in a month is uh, my estimate. Uh, without the EESL, uh, you know, numbers. So we'll have to see uh, the EESL mm -hmm. government, other state government tenders are out, etc. So how much that contributes, but this is where we are. And what what do you see in 2025? What, uh, like e three-wheeler, would it be nearly cl closing in on 50-60% uh, of the uh, electrification? 2025 it is difficult to get 50 percent i would say about uh, somewhere around 30 percent one third of the market should be uh, you know electric and by 2030 my uh, take is uh, more than 50 percent 50 to 60 percent should be the electric okay. yeah. so we'll come back to some audience questions so i see a few questions uh, mr karthik uh, would you like to go first Hello. Uh, yeah, Karthik, just one moment before you start. We also have a quick uh, announcement. Uh, Varshini, uh, are you there? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, before we dive into the audience questions, I would like to just uh, have, I have a very interesting announcement today. So we have uh, three lucky winners who are going to get uh, avail a one month free subscription on the Yaniki tech portal. So uh, I'll just quickly name them. Uh, it's Mr. Prashant Shukla, Mr. Deep Gupta, and Mr. Ganesh Gani. So you will have to quick uh, mail to admin at gyaniki.com uh, with the email ID you would like to use for the uh, subscription. And then uh, once you're done with the mail, uh, you, will ha you will receive a mail uh, with a poster. You'll have to tag us on LinkedIn with a post. And once you're done with the post on LinkedIn, you can avail the offer of the one month free subscription. So enjoy. What should you please also, uh, yeah, please also put it on the uh, chat window. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Dr. Deb, uh, do we have another 10 minutes? Uh, can we steal another 10 minutes of your time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no problem. So, Mr. Karthik, uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. Thanks for your uh, webinar. Actually, it is a uh, very content oriented. Uh, I'm I'm from Amara Raja Skill Development Center, uh, fondly called as Amaran brand. Actually, we are looking forward to uh, establish a skill development center purely on uh, e-vehicle related courses. Uh, will you please provide uh, some inputs regarding what are the important skills required or important skills? to be trained for the rural youth because uh, our mission is about skilling rural India to make in India. So can you provide uh, some important and very, very basic skills required in order to manufacture or in order to uh, like servicing sector of electric vehicle? 
Okay, uh, I understand. Uh, thanks, Karthik. Um, you see, I have a little different uh, opinion. You see, when once you're talking about skill development center, let's not uh, di distinguish or differentiate between rural India and urban India and semi-urban India. You know, we are um, talking about five trillion dollar of uh, economy size. So I think skill development uh, should be uh, irrespective of uh, region. Uh, so if you, of course the skill levels can be uh, you know different you can you can say you can uh, you want to develop uh, you know skills on the vehicle uh, repair side or uh, vehicle maintenance side uh, semi skill or high skill areas or uh, you can um, uh, you want to develop skills on the uh, IT site, for example. So, irrespective of whether the person is in rural India or urban India or wherever, I think it uh, really doesn't matter. On uh, the, the the question, or, or rather, the intent should be to develop these different set of skills uh, at different levels. You know, you can choose. Uh, somebody wants to become a technician, for example, an electrical uh, technician who wants to repair a battery, for example. So, uh, you know, create that uh, category then uh, create another category on the software side, the coding side, you know, the various uh, uh, coding or various IT skills, those are required. So even sitting in rural area, you can become a software engineer. You, all you need is an internet access, you know. So that's something that Zoho, you know, demonstrated to us. So you can be, uh, you can be in Manhattan or you can be sitting in, um, you know, um, a village of, uh, Tamil Nadu, it doesn't matter. So uh, the point I'm making is that this whole uh, skill development has to be uh, has to be seen in the context of uh, the usability or applicability. Unfortunately, um, uh, you know, the uh, engineering colleges or techno technology institutions uh, have not really taken cognizance of that, that the industry has moved significantly. You know, and uh, and uh, as I said, an automobile engineer today has to be more like a software engineer. So you need to teach these software skills, coding skills, language skills, etc., to practically all levels. Then comes the uh, specialization skill of uh, you want to become a uh, assembly engineer or you want to become a design engineer with you know. A, analysis uh, skills etc so i think that that's a very vast subject you need to sort of categorize it but uh, please don't categorize uh, on a region basis or geographically uh, based on the geographical spread of the country i mean that's my take i don't know that's uh, fine. thank you yeah, yeah. Thank you. uh mr Hello, uh, Dr. Dev. This is Arpit this side. Thank you Hello. for your insights. I I got hooked to one of the statistics that you uh, told us. This is regarding the volume. So, if the export size, if export market for Indian three wheelers is around four hundred thousand per annum, obviously pre pandemic. Uh, are we seeing the same sort of acceptance or traction for the electrified products that we are having, or do you see some sort of a lag? Uh, in this particular market segment, where I'm coming from is that I am from a tier one uh, automotive component supplier. And what we generally see is that once we receive that economies of scale, it becomes easier for us to uh, basically bring the cost down. And that happens when the exports and the domestic businesses both grow well. So do you see this adoption taking time in our traditional export markets? Yes, uh, you see this uh, one thing is that the three wheeler has been a, a great success story as far as exports are concerned. It is not known much, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, companies like Bajaj, TVS, uh, Mahindra, they have been, uh, they have really done well, particularly regions like Africa, then ASEAN countries, etc. So it, it is something that uh, one has to be proud of, you know, uh, being in the industry. And, uh, you know, uh, um, see, uh, the question you have asked is whether there is a lag or uh, whether this kind of volume will continue, if I understood correctly. Is that right? Uh, right, sir. Yeah, yeah. You see this, uh, EV is in, is in nascent stage uh, right now. 
so today uh, the firstly i believe the volume and the maturity will come on the domestic side this is typically uh, the way it happens unless you want to specifically become like an export oriented unit or you have uh, you have something in your mind that i want to become an exporter to for example africa or asean or uh, wherever uh, europe or something so unless that happens which is very rare uh, in an industry like automobile it has to, it is firstly you know domestic driven once that scale and maturity comes then uh, you start thinking about exports okay i can export my vehicle to bangladesh or sri lanka or africa or wherever so i think uh, we will see next 5 years firstly the domestic uh, volumes will kick in and once we have something like 100000 numbers on board then um, uh, you know we can say that we have a stable uh, supply chain to produce these vehicles and let me look at uh, exploring the uh, export export can be you know the existing relationships can be leveraged or you uh, you know create the new alliances so this is where uh, i think the whole innovation uh, the business innovation of indian entrepreneurs will come secondly i would also like to tell you uh, or talk about you know you mentioned that the scale comes and the cost down uh, happens i think that is a very traditional way indian industry has to change uh, looking at uh, uh, that the uh, you know cost down only comes by by scale because this is uh, uh, now now with using technology you can uh, actually reverse it you see uh, take the case of cell phone cell phones change every 6 months you know and the way they do it the quick uh, model introduction features addition upgrade, upgradation etc that has to happen and some of these technologies have to come into this industry automobile has been a very very uh, you know kind of legacy driven industry for a very long time changes here take long time everybody knows oems know okay new model introduction means 3 year 5 years it has been like that but i think those uh, timelines will have to be squeezed we have to work with uh, quick timelines ola is a case in point you know the, he he launched it okay leave aside the debate on the money that is put in but apart from that you know execution on ground you know less than 6 months and you come up with a product i think this is something that we need to see more and more in the indian uh, context of indian industry and um, this is where com- competitiveness on the export uh, front will also come thank you so much sir yeah. uh, mr vijay yes good morning uh, dr dev morning very 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 informative uh, you know talk that you have given very good i just want your your voice is very faint i can barely hear you can you speak loudly please okay yeah yeah i'll speak loud yeah better what i want to ask you is that uh, for different types of three wheelers or two wheelers or even four wheeler uh, do you think that there should be some standards now uh, in terms of the battery size and battery capacity you know so that you know the ancillary industry also can function and then you know you can have standard uh, so that maintenance and everything becomes you know easier then is it already there or uh, no i completely agree with you standardization of packs connectors uh, you know the whole um, uh, uh, sockets and plugs has to happen but problem is you know even in cell phone cell phone has been here for last 30 40 30 years now and and still we do you know we do not have the standardization of uh, the uh, charging uh, connectors so it takes time but i do see that uh, for uh, something like automobile where you know charging uh, on the road or uh, you know uh, across uh, uh, various uh, service providers is a, is going to be a major issue so standardization is is must the uh, on the battery size if you are going for swapping battery type then the whole connectors etc need to be standardized i completely agree with you thank you sir okay uh, mr arpan uh, you have a question okay so uh, one question uh, dr deb is around uh, the 1.5 ton vehicle uh, basically can range extender uh, type of uh, hybrid solution Uh, play a role wherein uh, engine is also there uh, allowing for a smaller battery pack so any thoughts on that 
See, hybrid uh, uh, hasn't been a success uh, story in India. You know, some companies came up with the hybrid cars, etc. The government came up with large uh, duty, etc. So, I think India is um, uh, has skipped the hybrid, and India is going straight from IC engine to electric. This is the uh, way it is going to happen. I I am not really sure whether uh, a range extender is a good idea, because then you have the um, uh, you have the IC engine, then you also have to carry the battery and the powertrain, etc. And uh, fitting that into it, and then uh, ensuring the stability, pickup, and load carrying capacity of the vehicle. I am not not really sure whether it will really work out. Uh, particularly for indian roads where you know the uh, road condition etc uh, plays a large role on the life of the vehicle so i think we should not look for any intermittent solution i think we have the uh, technology electric vehicle technology which as i said is mature the supply chain is getting set people are coming up with uh, great products i think we should look for um, uh, a zero based uh, grounds up uh, engineered vehicle you know not just a vehicle where you take out the engine and put back the battery i think that's not the concept that is going to succeed so we should look at um, complete engineered vehicle uh, purely electric uh, that is my view okay uh, one last question dr deb uh, can you share your view about aluminum air battery technology see i am not an expert on aluminum air but whatever i heard or i read it it looks interesting and recently indian oil did a uh, you know um, tie up with some uh, israeli company looks interesting some of these technologies will come uh, and we have to see you see from incubation to a business uh, there is a gap you know in you know, on the incubation stage on the lab stage there are various technologies available but as i said battery is something or the energy source is something where huge amount of research is happening huge amount of money is being put in so we are going to see some alternate technologies uh, aluminum air sodium uh, zinc sodium etc coming in we have to see you know how much is the scalability what is the infrastructure required and what is the business viability of uh, this i really i'm not uh, too sure about uh, the uh, you know the the business viability at the moment we'll have to wait and see you know who uh, what is the uh, business uh, viability of this technology okay thanks uh, dr deb i think that's all and i think we have overstretched the time also so thanks uh, for accommodating for that any last thoughts from your end i would only like to say that this is a great opportunity and it is a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, you know we are seeing this uh, great transition significant and a very very profound transition happening this uh, opens up lot of opportunity for the indian industry to really think uh, outwards and become a global player this is what i want to say and <coughs> i would like to see the it players uh, you know who will play a major role in this whole uh, evolution and making the indian auto industry competitive i want to see them playing playing a major role uh, and not just as on the sidelines or becoming like just a service provider but being uh, you know being a part of this auto industry revolution would be great and that is what i would like to uh, see india becoming a real uh, uh, superpower in the auto global auto industry that's my vision and dream thank you very much thank you thanks thanks sir thanks for your valuable time thanks for everyone to join in and uh, we will uh, come back again next next saturday with uh, another industry guest and uh, talk to you then thank you thank you very much shaker thanks yeah, thanks for thank you. you thank you thanks a lot